Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Dinner with the Diffs, our virtual support session for our parents. So good evening, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We are so excited that you have taken the time out of your evening to spend a little time with us. And y'all know tonight is Tuesday, so it is Taco Tuesday in our home. So we are having tacos tonight. Well, nachos for us. I wonder what you guys are having. So we would like to also welcome um, we have a very special guest with us this evening. My name is Shauna McKeithen, and I am a digital instructional facilitator for Hope County Schools. And we have this wonderful lady joining us on this evening, which is our mental health coordinator in student support services. So I would like to welcome Ms. Danielle Locklear to our broadcast on this evening. Say hey to the people, Ms. Danielle. Good evening, everyone. All right. So again, welcome. Um, we want to remind you that our entire digital teaching and learning team is here and available and ready to work for you. So anytime you need us, feel free to make sure that you email us. Our contact information will be in um, at the very end. So the other thing is just a quick little housekeeping rule. Please make sure that if you have any questions or any comments that you would like to make, please put them in the chat box. And we are here to answer those questions for you on this evening. Also, please make sure that they are appropriate because we are modeling this evening um, safety for our students. So before we get started with Miss Danielle and what she has to share with you tonight, I want to talk about what we have already covered with you guys thus far. So if you were to cruise on our YouTube channel, you will find that we have covered a couple of topics already. So one would be we talked about Chromebooks for remote learning. So we did everything that you need about Chromebooks. So if you are still struggling with things like Canvas as a parent, um, we talked about Canvas as a parent, how to get on Canvas parent. We showed you how to do it from a cell phone as well as from a computer so that you're able to check your students' devices and things of that nature. Just simple things like how to log on a Chromebook. So if you are new to Holt County Schools and you don't know how to log on your students' devices, we showed you how to do that as well. We covered that same information, but we did it on the iPad. So we did a tutorial on, well, a session on iPads for remote learning as well. And for our district, we use for K through two, we use um, Seesaw. And we did the session uh, with iPads. She covered Seesaw as well on that. So please make sure you check those. We also did a few quick tutorials. So we know that whenever teachers are teaching, sometimes they ask students to create a, to provide a screenshot of the material or the work that they have done. And we wanted to make sure all students knew how to screenshot on their Chromebook a certain area. So there's a quick tutorial on there on how to screenshot a certain area and also logging into your Chromebook. How do you do that as well? So there's a quick tutorial on that. Um, there on our YouTube channel, we also provide information for teachers. So if you are a teacher and you are looking for some more information on different, a variety of different topics in your classrooms, we have those as well. So feel free to browse through our YouTube channel and we hope that you find value here. Please leave us a comment to let us know if we are doing well. Please like, subscribe and put the notification button. You know all that good YouTube stuff everyone says. So without further, I do, we are going to jump into our topic for this evening, which is keeping your child safe while remote learning. So you can take it away, Miss Danielle. Thank you, Miss McKeith, and I'm glad you invited me on Taco Tuesday, but I do want you to know my favorite is beefy nachos. So I'm hanging, out after the, I'm hanging out tonight for beefy nachos, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to take a minute to introduce myself so and give the folks some idea about our student support services department. My name is Miss Daniel Locklear, and I am a licensed school social worker and clinical social worker. I am housed in the Student Support Services Department here in Hope County Schools. My responsibility is to support the social and emotional needs of our students and our families and our staff here in Hope County Schools. 
some of you may ask, well, okay, well, what are the things the student support services provide and who may be in that department? Well, in the student support services, there are a team of specialized instructional support professionals, such as myself, mental health coordinator, along with our school nurses, our school counselors, our school social workers, drop out prevention. And we also have several military family life consultants that are in our department as well all of who work to address, bar address barriers to those students, whether they're face-to-face, -face, whether they're virtual, um, and doing that through coordinating learning supports for those students to ensure that all students have success academically. Now, the team focuses primarily on those learning supports to meet those social emotional needs, those academic needs, those mental health needs, as well as those physical needs. Now, most of those supports are provided through instructional strategies. We provide it through providing prevention services, intervention services, and also we do a lot of coordinating and collaborating with transitioning services to our local community partners, um, and we provide a follow-up services once those referrals are being, have been referred out. We also provide um, direct services to our students through the form of education, um, through supportive counseling. We do consultation as well as individual assessments as well. In addition, we provide professional development and like tonight, we provide parent education. But we take pride in our ability to network with our community and our community stakeholders so we can establish additional layers of support for our students beyond the school walls. So tonight's focus, we wanna focus on supporting our students doing remote learning. And please feel free to, you know, enter any question you may have in the chat box, even if it is in relation, if it relates to services outside of the school, if it's something I'm able to assist you with, I will definitely respond to that. And if not, feel free to follow up beyond tonight's focus. As you can see in our family room, we have a couple of portraits on our family wall. And this sort of kind of will guide tonight's discussion. In our first portrait, you will see we have our students who are graduating. Ultimately, we all want to see our students graduate from high school. So we will talk about what that student support service, support, supporting students looks like. But also we have next to that is a mom and her daughter, her son out in the meadows and she's modeling behavior. So we're gonna talk about setting healthy habits. We'll also talk about safety and internet safety and monitoring our students. And lastly, we will close with some parenting tips. So with that being said, let's begin with the end in mind, our graduation. So if you'll click there for us, Ms. McKeithen. We wanna talk a little bit about supporting our students while learning. As parents, we play a pivotal role in our children's academic success. It does not matter whether we are in the classroom or we are at home in our living room couch. At the end of the day, we are responsible for our students and that instruction they receive. We were the first and we are also the most important educator to our own children. As parents, we should encourage our students to learn and be accountable for their academics, whether they are in the classroom with a teacher in front of them or as caregivers at home if we're providing that instruction, we want them to take responsibility of their learning. As parents, we wanna make sure that we communicate expectations and how do we communicate expectations so that our students will understand? We wanna make sure that we are specific when we give those expectations. As parents, we know our children. I know my sons better than most. So I know that when I'm setting my expectation, communicating this expectation that I wanna be realistic and I wanna be reasonable expectations because at the end of the day, I want them to feel as if they are successful in whatever they are trying to reach or whatever that goal may be they've established. So making sure that they are reasonable and realistic for them to reach. I wanna offer that encouragement. In school, when our students were face-to-face, -face, they get those words of encouragement and that ongoing support. With remote learning, it's a little difficult because some of our students are at home and, our parent, and, and their parents are away. So they're logging in and they're logging out into their Zoom, their Zoom courses. So we wanna make sure that we reinforce that encouragement with our students by using positive words. We want, to, we want to boost their morale about school. We want to praise them for the success they've done, encourage them and motivate them to be successful. And we also want to reinforce accountability. Now, we know that at home, we're not in the classroom. In the classroom with our younger children, they got little manipulatives and we got all these little things that sort of kind of 
allows the students to, you know, to do multiple things when, it, when we talk about those different learning styles. At home, we may have to create that creativity and make sure that we have those resources readily available for our students to learn at home when they're home remote. So making sure that they have everything they need to be successful while remote learning. Because when we make sure that they have the things they need, they're not, they're not stressing themselves, they're not building anxiety because they don't have the resources they need available to them. So make sure we have that prior planning so that we can sort of kind of reinforce and, and do what we need to do so those students can be accountable for their learning. Show interest in our, in our children's learning. Ask questions, be available, provide support. Let our students know that we are, we do care about their learning. And how can we show that interest is we can have those open conversations about what they experienced today. What was school like today? What was your experience like today? Making sure that they're able to sort of kind of verbalize what their concerns are. And if they are in a pivotal place and they are struggling, making sure that we help guide them in that problem solving step, sort of kind of resolve whatever the issues may be. It may be something as simple as sending an email to a teacher to sort of kind of clear up some communication so that they'll have clear understanding of what, what needs to take place. And that goes back to just actively checking in with our students' progress, whether it's academically or emotionally. Um, when we talk about emotional check-ins, and we talked about checking in with seeing how our students are feeling, they mostly check in because what we have realized is that some of our students carry additional stress and anxiety because they're not face-to-face. -face. So sometimes if there's a disconnect in technology, and there may have been a, a early end to a class, that sometimes that generates anxiety for us just because they don't know what they missed, or they don't know if, if there was an assignment due, or if they can't log in into Canvas, they, they immediately get really anxious about what they need to do. So make sure that we check in emotionally with our children so that we can sort of kind of help them sort of kind of mitigate some of those symptoms of anxiety. So if we help them problem solve and resolve those, resolve those issues and that sort of kind of mitigates that stress level. So what are some things that we can do sort of kind of reinforce that? When our children want to play and they want to play online, for example, when we have lots of kids who like to play Fortnite, um, maybe we would talk about not playing Fortnite before bed because it sort of kind of makes it a little harder for them to sleep. We may want to introduce them to some apps like mindfulness, um, mindfulness apps that are like Calm or Headspace, which are apps that sort of kind of help them relax and sort of kind of get them prepared to for sleep. Um, just say they want to watch TV. So we might, instead of watching and getting on that TikTok and Snapchat, which they love to do, we may want to sort of kind of set up some, establish some podcasts for them. So that's a little bit more healthy and sort of kind of build that creativity. Or if they want to take some breaks and you take a break, because there is one thing that we have realized with Canvas is that some of our students have a really hard time disconnecting with the instruction. So what will happen is, is during the school day, they're in Zoom, and then in the afternoons, the teachers began to upload assignments in Canvas. So what happens is some of the, the, it's linked to the student's devices, so automatically the students think, well, oh, the teacher posted something, or I got an email where she may have posted something, so they automatically go back to their computer screens. So let's encourage just to just to take breaks or children take breaks and sort of kind of you've been sitting for a while you, you haven't really disconnected from your computer today maybe let's go outside let's take a stretch let's take a walk uh let's walk over to the playground so making sure that we encourage our students to take breaks but always 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 let's make sure we have those open lines of communication with not just our children but with the teachers as well i know oftentimes as, as a parent um, I will log on into PowerSchool because I do have my students log in. Um, and so I will be able to see his grades. I will be able to see his attendance and that way I can monitor to that. So sometimes I may not necessarily say anything because I've had access to be able to see um, the things that, that I needed to see in PowerSchool. But what I need to make sure that I do is I communicate and open up that communication with my son to say, look, you know, I was in power school today and I noticed these things about your grades where I noticed this assignment was posted. So making sure we open up that communication. Are you okay if I talk with your teacher about it? Because I noticed that there were some grades in there that I didn't feel real comfortable about and I need to, you know, find out if there's some opportunities for you to, to do something otherwise. So making sure that we open up that communication, communication with the teacher as well as our son or daughters. The other is talk about help with creating a learning network. One of the parents that we've been working with made a comment about um, 
she was concerned about her son's ability to connect with peers outside while remote learning. So what she did in her neighborhood was connect her son with some of the peers who were in his in his neighborhood, but also on his grade level, so that he was sort of kind of and they had similar goals. And so that even beyond the remote 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 learning, that even when he was outside doing some of his free time, he was able to connect with those students not only in his learning networks, but he was able to com connect with them socially outside in his neighborhood as well. So making sure that we build um, that learning network with our children. We also want to plan for those unexpected circumstances that provide those setbacks, but also trigger some undesired emotions. Sometimes when our work schedules change and um, our student schedules change or we experience some internet allergies, we, that sort of kind of is a setback, not just as adults, but for our children as well. So we have to make sure that we prepare and talk about that so that in the event that this happens, that our sons or daughters will know what they need to do next. Ms. McKeithen. So now we're back in a virtual living room and we want to reflect on modeling behavior. Children develop healthy habits when adults model healthy habits. And as a parent, and as many of you that's listening tonight, we know how important it is to establish and maintain routines. Children need structure. I cannot say that enough. Oftentimes they rebel against it, but we know they need it. So we want as, as, as often as we can, we want to try to maintain as much of a routine as possible. We want to try to eat our meals at a regular time. We want to establish a Sleep schedule, which is the one thing that I have noticed that has really changed um, among our students, um, is their sleep, sleep, sleep schedules, but also their sleep patterns. We want to make sure our students have enough rest and they're able to engage in their remote learning. We want to plan for those busy morning exits and those busy evening returns, because a lot of times that generates a lot of anxiety when we're trying that last minute, oh, I didn't prepare, I didn't plan. So make sure to plan and have everything together so that we exit in the morning as a group, because I do realize that for many of us with remote learning, we've had to utilize other resources like our grandparents, our next door neighbors, childcare providers. So exiting in the morning times may look different uh, while we're remote learning than it did maybe when we were face-to-face. But also, what about those busy evening schedules when we come home a little later than normal and it generates that frustrated anxiety for not just the parents, but everyone in the household because it disrupts that routine. But also, too, I think it's really important, and I think parents did a really good job with this while we've been on remote learning, is incorporate some really positive, fun activities. We have had a chance to hear some really cool things that parents have did during the time they've been on remote, because the one thing I think we all have realized is we've had the opportunity to, to spend a little bit more time together doing remote learning, because we, it, it, we've sort of kind of been at home, and for some of us, we've been at home for the duration of the, the entire week. So by the time the weekend gets there, we look forward to doing something fun on the weekend beyond that remote learning schedule. So incorporate those fun activities for the family. If you can do that in the afternoons, maybe it's just with a, a nice breeze walk in the afternoon, or maybe it's just a, you know, a, a stroll on your bike or doing something fun each day to sort of kind of disconnect and, and make sure that we incorporate that family fun. We also want to establish model working state. We also want to work, establish and model workstations to develop um, for remote learning. Now, I do know that one of my parents, she talks about she has remote learning bins in her home. So what she does is that she has purchased these bins for the children. She puts everything in their bins. So they have their books, they have their chargers, they have their the manipulatives and things they need for support learning. And in their, so when they're, where workstations are organized, then that sort of kind of alleviates and mitigates that frustration, anxiety. Not only did she do that, she was able to organize the in their um, their Zoom links so that they don't they're not all over the place logging in for their Zooms. And she was able to help them get organized each morning. So each morning for remote learning, and it saves them time, but also minimize their stress level. So every morning she has now a routine in place, so everybody gets their bins, they go to the kitchen table, some goes to the kitchen table, some have other spots because they have to spread out because they can't sit together because they're in their Zoom classes, but she has everything organized for them. So now where initially she said it took them 20 minutes in the morning, she says they can get ready and get set up within five to 10 minutes with their learning bins. We also want to establish rules as to 
how and when we're going to use technology. And that's not just for our students, but that's for everyone in the, in the home. We want to develop those times that are non-negotiables. When is it that we're not going to get on our devices? So we're not going to um, get on our phones during breakfast time or maybe dinner time, or maybe while we're in the family room for family time. Those are those non-negotiables and the family needs to agree on those so that it does not generate frustration or anxiety when you say, okay, it's nine o'clock and your phone should go in the phone bin for the evening because that's a non-negotiable and we have already agreed upon that as a family. So everyone can agree that phones go into the bin at nine o'clock. Same way with dinner time, lunch time, or maybe it's when we go to the gym and we go, so we go to the gym as a family, or maybe it's during craft times and during our hobby times. We want to make sure that we don't want to, we, we want to value that time together. And as often as possible, we want to make sure that when we focus and we're with our children, we want to minimize those distractions. As parents, it's really important that we and our children are talking, especially when we engage in a conversation about the, the school day and we're talking about well how was school today and all of a sudden you get a text or you get a phone call or you hear a message coming on your messenger off of Facebook and the first thing we do is we grab our phone so let's be mindful of our distractions because our children need our attention and we want to focus on children because that is important because that shows interest in in them but also shows interest in their learning we also want to avoid always using screens to entertain. And I noticed that sometimes, especially since we've been at home with remote learning, we find ourselves at home more often. So we're using um, our iPads and our Chromebooks to entertain our younger children while we take care of other chores and responsibilities in the home. And if that's something that we, that we have to do to sort of kind of make it through the day, choose apps or games that promote creativity or problem solving or social skills. That sort of kind of reinforces that support and it sort of kind of takes away from those things that may be harmful to them. And next we wanna focus on some of our safety tips. So, Ms. McKeithen, privacy and safety. Parents, first and foremost, you are the parents. You get to decide on what apps, what devices, what programs that your children have access to. It is your responsibility to know what your children have on their devices. You have to make your, you have to be aware of what information Make your children aware of what information is safe to share and what isn't safe to share. I will tell you, oftentimes, we see more than what we should here at the schools when it comes to information in, 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 on, in our devices. We have a couple programs that are school-based programs that provide some building support here at school. One of the programs that we have as a, as a, as a school-based support is called Gaggle. Now, what Gaggle does, it provides surveillance in the, um, the emails, um, Google documents, their chats, and calendars. And what it does is Gaggle will take things that is typed in by our students and it will compare it with what they call a block word list within their system. And if there are keywords that are captured um, and if it becomes a potential safety risk, the gaggle system will alert assigned persons at the school. It could be, they could be a social worker, it could be a counselor, it could be an administrator. And so once that alert goes out or that phone, and it's usually through a phone notification, it's very severe. Um, those assigned persons will contact you as a parent and say, you know, this is what we received through gaggle. Um, this is what we're concerned about. And we'll talk about, we'll problem solve whatever was, was reported and we'll find some resolution. But in the event that that continues to happen, the school will have no other resolve but to put some penalties in place. So as parents, what we want to do is we want to encourage you to sort of kind of monitor and make sure that you're aware of where your children are accessing and what devices they're on and who they're talking with and what information they're sharing. Because at the end of the day, we only have so much support that we can provide when it comes to monitoring our students. Another uh, program that we have here in the district is called Go Guardian. Now, Go Guardian is not a new one. It's one that we've had for a while. And what it does, it monitors where our students go in their searches. And so what it will do, it, it usually identifies two areas is mostly two smart alerts we often get. And that one smart alert is self-harm. 
and the other smart alert is explicit. Now, one thing with GoGuardian is teachers are able to view some of the tabs that, that the students have open. So the students can provide some block, the teachers can provide some blocks for the students, but they're not able to monitor and provide all the blocks for the students. So once again, we wanna encourage your parents to monitor where, your, where, where students are searching at home because once again, we're not, we're not in school. And oftentimes, you know, many of our classrooms have you know, 20 and 30 students that our teachers are monitoring, even with all those tabs open. So those, your one student could have more than one tab open that teacher has to monitor, but you imagine all 29 of those students with multiple tabs open and that teacher's trying to monitor. So that becomes very difficult. And oftentimes with the Go Garden, it will capture those things like self-harm and explicit. And we were able, those are two things that we can monitor and it will send us an alert and that too will warrant a phone call to the parent and we will discuss and problem solve what that, that assigned person has seen and determine what next steps are based on the information that was captured in the Go Guardian. But those sites, make sure that we are, what information that we are sharing with friends and with, that's another thing that we often find is that sometimes that the students are not face-to-face. -face. So what they have been doing is sharing information with their friends through, through chat. So we have been able to capture some of the conversations with the students and intervene that way. The other thing we wanna warn our students about is interacting with strangers and making sure that they know who they're communicating with. One thing that is very common for our students is they get very chatty within the gaming systems and apps on their devices. So oftentimes they're gaming and chatting with folks that they don't even know. So have that conversation about what information you share with those folks within that, that gaming portal and what information is not safe to share. We also wanna make sure that we are mindful of our, our, um, our students' social media. Once it's out there, it's out there. We can't get it back. And oftentimes, you know, that can, that can bring a uh, defect to our character sometime. And oftentimes that triggers some emotions for our students. And that generates a whole nother series of issues for, for our students. So that's why it's important to talk about safe texting behaviors and remind students that they are being monitored. I can't say enough that we want to express the importance of strong passwords and logging out when you have completed assignments. I will say that oftentimes we will get students and we will get alerts and we will contact the student and the parent and the student will say, well, that wasn't me. Well, if it wasn't you, then who was it? Because what we were able to capture was that student's email address. So if it wasn't you, then maybe you didn't log out of your device and maybe someone else was able to do that. So making sure that we have safe passwords and that we are logging out once we complete those assignments. So we are back in our virtual room. And our last area we wanna talk about is our safety tips. As parents, we wanna make sure that the content that our children is accessing is age appropriate. Now, there are some sites out there like safekids.com and some other um, links that sort of kind of will lay out what is appropriate content based on that student's age. Um, it's broke down like for students that are two-year-old, seven-year-old, this group of tweens that's out there now. So what is appropriate content for that age group? We also want to make sure that we regularly check the privacy settings. You have those ability to, to address to, for those controls. Um, one thing when we talk about um, controls and there are several systems out there and, and I'm sure Ms. McKeithen is probably gonna share on this in just a second. But one of the things that we, we often talk about and I know some parents use is Bark. Um, another one is called um, Circle Home Plus and what Circle Home Plus, it allows you to access, um, put time restraints on, on the internet, but also set time limits to the searches. And another one that's out there is called Web Watchers and Teen Safe. Now, I did have McGruff and Safeguard lifted on here as well, but Ms. McKeithen, you may want to share on this as well. I'm not sure if the DIFS has a, some other resources that are available to the families. Well, you've covered quite a bit of them. Um, I would like to add that um, parents, you know, if your child is using, like outside of the Chromebooks, if your child is using 
um, Android devices or if they're using like their cell phones and their iPads or um, iOS devices, Apple devices, um, those devices also have, excuse me, their own monitoring system for you. So you have to a lot of times make sure that you have your child um, in a family connection with you on your phone so that you can monitor what they're looking at directly from your phone. You can check, you can change that, you can check their screen time and see how long they were on certain um, certain apps and um, how long they were on the phone, how much texting they're doing, how much searching they're doing and what they are searching. And then you can also um, limit those things, limit those restrictions. So anything, even with their, um, when you're on your fire sticks and they're watching certain things, you can keep your child from watching certain things. It's called, um, you just use the parent control when you change the parental controls on those and they'll have to put in a code in order to get to certain apps. So there are lots of different ways that the companies are making it so that parents can monitor their, their children and also make sure that um, our kids are safe. Now we do have Go Guardian Parent here in the district. Um, the teachers can only do so much. Um, administration can only block so much, but if you wanted to see a little bit more, um, then you are able to see that, but you will need to contact us, the DIFs, and we can give you access to Go Guardian Parent. And after, um, when she wraps up, we will show you how to contact us um, at the last portion of this. But that is all I have to add is make sure that you are using the devices that you already have at home and are using parental controls that are built into those devices for you and your kids. And I do want to close, Ms. McKeithen, with the fact that, you know, it's important to maintain open communication when it comes to technology. And I will say, as a clinician, we have seen a major increase in depression, anxiety. Uh, we've seen an increase in, you know, self-harm threats. And there's a lot of mental health safety concerns around remote learning. At the... It, I want to let you know that as a district, we do want to support our families out there when it comes to additional stress and anxiety, which comes with remote learning. Do not hesitate to reach out to your, your school support teams. Each school has a school support team that is comprised of those, at least that school social worker, that school counselor, and that school nurse that can support our families in the event that the, there is an increase in, in undesired emotions as it relates to remote learning because we wanna support our students. But also too, not only has our students um, seen an increase in um, emotional needs, but as well as our parents as well, because it is really stressful to manage and juggle the schedule of remote learning. But as it is important to address the safety needs when it comes to our students, it's just important to make sure that we're aware of our own safety needs as parents. So in the event that if we can provide any additional support for our students or parents out there that may be struggling with the remote learning process, please feel free to contact us. Ms. McKeithen has added the inf our contact information for student support services um, on the closing slide. But as we said once again, it is it is our it is our responsibility as parents to make sure that we monitor the technology use and of our students. Because at the end of the day, we all want to see our students achieve success academically. We want to see our students graduate. We want to be those parents who model healthy behaviors. We want to be those parents that safeguard our students. And we want to be those parents that are able to share with others with supports and positive words and guidance with those families that may struggle along the way. But if we can support you in any way, please do not hesitate to give us a call and reach out to us for support. But I do want to say, Ms. McKeithen, thank you for inviting Student Support Services um, to the presentation tonight. And I look forward to um, beefy nachos after tonight's meeting. And thank you so much for inviting us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And um, I just want to remind you all, just like she said, we have to do our part as parents. And when we're speaking to you um, from the parent point of view, we are parents as well. So although I am a digital um, specialist at the, at the school district, I'm also a parent and we have to model these things as well. And we want to share these tips with you so that you can model them as well. I have to monitor my child at home um, because once school is over, the teachers are no longer on Go Guardian monitoring what your child is doing. Um, Go Guardian, the back end is still monitoring what your child is doing. 
but I have to monitor my daughter. I have to look to see what she's doing. I have to go in and check her screen time. I have to do all the things um, from the parent point of view to make sure that my daughter, I'm keeping her safe because if nobody else can keep her safe, it's my responsibility to do that as her mom. So we just wanted to make sure that tonight we provided you with a few tips um, to help you all with keeping your child safe while they're remote learning. And it was so wonderful and awesome to have Miss Danielle with me tonight to make sure that you that she could provide you with some really quality information, some great information to be able to take and actually use. Like some of those tips she gave were amazing. Do you have routines established at home for your kids? Do you are you prepared for those like busy, crazy days, those mornings where you wake up a few minutes late? Are you prepared for that? Do we even think about like the anxiety that it places on our kids? So that was some awesome information that she gave us this evening. And we hope and pray that we gave some value to you on this evening. So for some further support. Um, if you would like to reach out to us for anything, please um, remember that for classroom issues, you contact your classroom teacher. But if you are struggling with any type of tech support, feel free to email us at dtif at hopecountyschools.k12.nc.us. Well, it's .hcs. And then our phone number is on the screen. For student support services, we have provided a number for them as well. And we thank you guys so much again for your time. Um, um, don't forget, we are here in the chat. If you have any questions, um, please reach out to us and we will do our best to uh, support you in any way that you need in our, in our district because our district is one team and one goal. And our digital teaching and learning community is here to guide, prepare, and to support you um, in everything that you are doing with your kids and for your kids during this remote learning process. So thank you again. Enjoy your nachos and tacos and, and rice and beans and she likes beefy burritos. I hope you guys enjoy all of that good stuff on this evening. So have a great evening. Thank you again for turning in to Hope County Schools Digital Teaching and Learning Broadcast, the Family Connect series. Make sure that, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and make sure that you hit that notification bell so that you can see whenever we provide more tips for parents, teachers, and students. Have a good night. Thank you guys so much for your time. Tell the people bye. <laughs> see you later.